Hi, and welcome to another installment of Learning Trees series on business intelligence. Since Power BI can import data from an incredible variety of different sources, it shouldn't surprise us that Power BI can now also import data from our data frames. However, since R is a statistical programming environment, not a data repository per se, it also shouldn't surprise us that there are a few differences and a few traps. We'll start by going to the Get Data button, bringing up the familiar dialog box with our list of data sources. You can get to the R script source by scrolling all the way down uh, through the entire list. But it's actually a little faster if you click on the other list, and that way you can go to the R script directly. This will bring up a modest dialog that will allow you to paste in your R script. You should definitely paste your R script rather than edit it here. Here we define two simple data frames, and it's important to realize that this script is going to be executed for each data frame. So if there are two data frames, the same script will be executed twice, doubling the effort. For a small script, we won't worry about that. For a larger script, we might want to create a separate script for each data frame. Now we'll choose both data frames, click OK. And because the data load is fairly small, the processing will be fairly quick. If, however, we go to the design view uh, and look at the two data frames we've imported, there's no relationship between the two. This will prevent us from using many of the most interesting techniques in Power BI. So let's go through the process again. This time, we'll create a slightly more elaborate script. Uh, to appreciate this script, we'll take a look at our studio. We're going to make use of a library called uh, data.table. has many valuable functions, but the function we're interested in is going to let us add the row names or row index numbers to the data frame itself. This will allow us to establish relationships. So we'll copy that script that we've tested in our studio, paste it into the little R script dialog in Power BI, and now we'll click OK. Once again, there are only two data frames, so we'll see two entries in the navigator. We'll select both of them, click OK, And now when the data is imported, we should see that uh, Power BI has correctly inferred a relationship between the two data frames uh, that we have created. And indeed, that's what we observe. OK, now we'll take a look at a more elaborate R script. This one will create a graphic. And so we would like to use it as a Power BI visualization. We'll go back to our friend, the R Studio. We'll test the script in R Studio, make sure it's functioning correctly. And then we'll copy the script and repeat the process we've just gone through. Uh, we'll paste this script into the data import. Now, we don't have to import this script, but we're going to need access to at least some appropriate data source before we can start working with the script as a uh, visualization. We paste, we click OK, we select the only data frame there is. And then we go ahead and import the data. Now, when we get to the business intelligence design environment, uh, 
we see that the fields are already there. We're going to need to drag at least one field to the R visualization before we can go ahead and work with the R visualization editor. We'll paste in the script again. This is the script that's going to do the work. Now we can run the R script and satisfy ourselves that the visualization has been successfully created. Now if we return to the editor, we can ask the editor to open up the script for us in the R Studio. What we'll find is that Power BI has modified this script. Most importantly, in order to match up the R data frames with the Power BI data, Power BI will make a local copy of the data frame data in a text file. We can actually see the identity of this file in the script. If we are curious, we can go to the Windows Explorer and drill down into the uh, local temporary files and actually observe the CSV file that was created by uh, Power BI. It should be obvious that while this is interesting for relatively small data frames, it could potentially be a performance problem if you were dealing with very large data sets. So our take home lesson is uh, we only want to define one R data frame per script to avoid duplication. And we want to be careful with large data sets uh, because they may be uh, performance problems uh, in the Power BI desktop. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please don't hesitate to go to blog.learningtree.com to learn more. And perhaps I'll see you at a Learning Tree class in the near future.